into game number two again alive getting that first map advantage or first game advantage I should say over the STC I guess the STC he hadn't a need to play uh, until his, this is his first match of the day right now so he could have been a little bit late slept in just a little bit um, taking it uh, a relax and maybe just a little bit too much there and unfortunately just showed up a little bit late for his first game yeah, obviously you never want something like that to happen. Um, uh, but the SGC could see this situation and be like, you know what? I didn't need that anyway. I was going to 2 him <laughs> anyway. It's no big deal. I'm going to smash his face in. But that's easy to say. Very hard to do when a player like Alive is involved. He is your blue Terran player in the top right-hand location. His opponent, of course, who is currently down 1-0, it is the red Terran player of the STC from Team OGS. Yeah, so Daybreak is going to be the first map choice here. I'm not sure actually what uh, was vetoed from both these players. But a, a Terran versus Terran, obviously, it's going to be a pretty even matchup because, of course, it's a mirror matchup. We're not we're not going to be con concerned about what race it does this. Map and balance. They both, they both yeah. have the same mechanics. It's, and what it comes down to, like all games, unit composition, positioning, and just general play here. One thing to know right away, though, is a, qu uh, a wall in, actually, um, from the SDC right away, rather than making a supply depot near his command center, being just a little bit more efficient with his mining, he's just to go for a faster wall in. Now, wh why, why is that, Axel? Um, you know, you could say to deny scouting if the SDC comes a little bit earlier, get in, um, stuff like that. But it's not a terribly huge deal. I mean, th th there's also like the factor of later game, like. Hellions running by yep. or something like that. You want to make sure mm -hmm. you have a wall off so to prevent that from happening. Um, but yeah, it, it's nothing that you should read too much into, at least in my opinion. Uh, what's important is, of course, that the gas times for these players. It looks like the SEC going for an incredibly early gas. Uh, meanwhile, a relatively yeah, 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 uh, no gas here yet for a live. We'll have to see what he ends up doing. It looks like it's going to be a one rack fast expand for him. But uh, just a little reminder, this is Group D. Um, alive. Uh, this is the first game for Alive in this group. He's currently 0-0. Zero and zero. He came from pool play, or not from pool play, from the winner's bracket, the open winner's bracket, yep. and now he is tasked of uh, fighting, fighting through pool play. I think uh, the players in this group are Grubby, Oz, Parting, uh, and the SGC. SGC. And another person Rain. from, yes, Rain. you are correct So th one. those are all the players in this group. Alive, of course, uh, since he came through open pool play or open bracket, he has to play through every single one of them today. Wait. Now you may be like, uh, that's interesting because the players who were in pool play already played three other games yesterday, so yeah. they, may be like, they may be less fatigued. Uh, so there's a lot to consider here, but yeah, important important reminder: Alive is up one zero. Yeah, Alive with that early lead is going to go for an early command center right now. Meanwhile, the SDC is going for a tech lab here. Will he switch it up? Yes, it looks like. Actually, he may just go for a very fast starport is what I'm anticipating right on that tech lab immediately here. Probably moving up right towards Banshee. Uh, possibly without Cloak, though. He still only has one gas, so that's probably in, uh, an inclination of that. And oh, look at that SCV. You think, you know, around this timing, like four minutes into the game, well, my opponent's probably going to have a Marine out there. I'm not going to be able to scout too much. But uh, Alive takes uh, not necessarily advantage of this, but he gets a little bit lucky. I guess the Marine might have been just a little bit mispositioned. Gets in there, scouts the starport, uh, scouts the tech lab on the starport, pardon me. And now that's going to reveal to him, okay, you know, this probably is a Banshee opening. Uh, I'm just going to have to prepare myself a little bit more. Yeah, and, you know, th th this is one of those things, especially in this matchup, where you put down a command center. Your opponent's is nowhere, is, I guess he's relatively close to it, but it's the point is it's going to be very delayed. So there's two sides of this coin. The STC has to do a lot of damage here mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a command center. He has to do damage with the units that come out of these buildings. Now he's building a Banshee, not getting Cloak. Makes sense because he only has one gas. Uh, making a tank, no, it's a Hellion out of that factory. Going to try to do some damage with that, but there is a bunker of you. So Alive, his goal right now Deflect as much as you can. Don't lose your economy. You're ahead in economy. Get some units out to defend against these these these, these units from um, from the SDC because he has his command center now. You know he's fine for the macro game. Just has to make sure he doesn't lose too much um, to the to these early units from 
the SGC, and he'll be he'll be he'll be in a perfect situation in this game. Yeah, I like this bunker at the front there. It's going to deter uh, the dual pronged attack here. No doubt that's going to be coming with this Banshee and the Hellions potentially at the front for the SDC. Scan goes down. See now that the starport has been lifted up. Banshee is on the way. You're going to kite Marines as best as she can. Now looking to target fire down some more Marines. More, more Hellions. Oh, the Hellions Hellion. actually get in there with the run by. Wow. He's going to run away. And now what does Alive have to defend this attack? He's got a handful of Marines. Looks like he's going to kill the Hellion with his own Hellion. And the Banshee ah. will get taken out as well. Huh. Not wow. A, not a lot of damage there. There was a no. there was a definite potential. He lost two Hellions and a Banshee. And he only killed some Marines and what? And three workers. Three workers. That's it, not it, good. It looked like that Banshee was going to do a lot more damage yeah. than it would. And then Marines kind of came up from below there. And then just I think what happened that. was, you remember he had that bunker? Yeah. I think once he saw the Banshee, he, get, he got he the guys out of the bunker, um, which left an opening for the Hellions to get in. So yeah. the STC, very smart play, saw that the Marines weren't there anymore, just ran right by um, and straight to the na straight, straight to the middle line. But unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to kill a whole lot. I mean, we can see three SCVs there are quite low in health. Uh, I guess hoping their buddies will repair them pretty soon because uh, he literally, if, if his toenail breaks, he will die. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, as of who's ahead right now, I got, I got to put it in favor of Alive right now. Um, yeah. You know, he has that econ lead, or he should. Uh, well, you know, he has that second command center down. Yeah. Um, so now the and transition his is just now getting it up. Yeah, now the transition into for Alive is now actually going to be Cloak Banshee. Um, I don't think there's actually an engineering bay on the map yet for the STC. It looks like he's transitioning actually into Mass Mass Marine. Uh, mass Mass Marine Medivac relying on STEM. He does have an engineering bay, so he's able to throw up a turret once this Banshee does in fact arrive. But without STEM, without combat shield, yeah. it, these Banshees are going to do a, a lot more damage than the STC did to Alive. And the, w the f first attack, I actually wanted to go back quickly. It's this one Banshee. He's not target firing down. STV's left and right here. St actually, Stim is done. Pardon me. I didn't actually see that. And actually, wow. oh, Alive reacting just a little bit slowly there. Not able to say that. And now, counter drop coming in for SDC, moving to the main base. Target firing down. STV's going to pick up and get out of there immediately. Um, but that early attack from STC was meant to hurt the economy uh, of Alive. And with that being unsuccessful, the, r the recourse of that is Alive gets ahead, and now he's going to try and get more ahead by actually yeah. crippling the economy. And the thing is, he didn't do that much damage with that Banshee, that Cloak Banshee. That's a lot of investment into that Cloak technology and into that Banshee. I think, did he only make one? Okay, he made a second one. He's trying to do some damage in the middle yeah. of the map here. Trying to let's get a kill count. Looks like one kill has killed one Marine. Um, but again, it hasn't paid for itself yet. This, this Cloak technology hasn't paid for itself. There's turrets out. For the STC, he knows exactly what's going on. So this game is relatively even. Both players trying to do a lot of harassment. Both, both players failing in their harassment. Um, the other player is just too good at defending, too good at being safe, um, and too good at defending everything that's happening. Banshee re uh, wreaking havoc yet again now. Just trying to do whatever he can. There is one missile turret up there, so it is able to detect. But he's going to be content just sitting and firing away on that one supply depot. And now we have a second gas moving up now for the STC. As he's moving across the map here, although alive very smartly, has that done like a watchtower. Only one siege tank for this event. So he does have 25 marines. Now, we may see a pickup here from the STC and drop onto the supply depot and try and neutralize the effectiveness of it. For the um, siege tank. But Al Alive is positioned for a drop in his main as well by keeping those marines. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he definitely saw those meta which is why he's being so cautious with these marines, making sure mm. um, no harassment happens. And also... Um, he saw the draw play earlier, you know, he was able to defend against that. So he's wary of that being a threat. So, uh, again, uh, both these players playing extremely safe, pushing this to the mid game, um, you know, to the late game even, where we're actually approaching once these, once these guys get thirds, um, and once they start really teching up and really solidifying their tech choice. But it looks like as of right now, the SGC focusing on the Marines, uh, focusing on the tank production. Uh, two tanks actually, Siege Mode almost done, getting those upgrades for those Marines. Look at the upgrade comparison right now, 0-0, zero, zero, it looks like for both of these players. Actually, 0-1 for the SEC, so he has a minor upgrade advantage in that regard. Um, so we'll have to see when the next major engagement is going to happen, and you said it before, it's all going to come down to unit positioning, you know, 
when do you have your tanks sieged, where are they sieged up, um, where are you going to flank, what's your service area going to be like, um, and, and splitting those marines to make sure like a whole pack of marines doesn't absorb all, all the siege tank damage. Yeah, yeah. We saw early on that actually the SDC went for very, very heavy marine play, and that was indicative of him wanting to maybe get a little bit aggressive there with drops. Now he's slowly transitioning to a more, let's say, traditional style of marine tank, and he's still threatening with drops, so he can see just one medevac isolated with a bunch of group of marines. Um, but Alive currently has the advantage in, in um, siege tanks, I believe. He does have two factories moving, and he still has actually marines placed in his main to deflect any kind of drops. So you can stim in, nip that medevac right away. As actually we can see, another a drop is actually coming towards the main base of Alive. No, oh no, no, never mind. That's not a drop. That's a marauder. That's a marauder. What are you doing? Freaking what are you doing, outsiders. marauder? Why are you looking like a medevac on the <laughs> mini map? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I mean, both these players just trying to solidify positions here. Uh, looks like they're both going to try to solidify their thirds pretty soon. Location probably going to be taken right here. Um, this would be weird, but he could do it. And this would be weird as well. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Looks like both these players scouting out, trying to look for uh, the progress. Well, the medevac might get picked off here. He has to be careful. Um, and his stim goes down, but that medevac is going to get away. He should be wary of that. Probably going to try to reinforce. Lowering every single supply depot so the Marines can get by and defending us that drop. Uh, and they are returning down to the south side of the map at the same time, though. Alive trying to take a third of the STC coming forward, though. Not going to let that happen. Yeah, Alive's going to be ready for this. He spots the army position of the STC, seated up his tanks. And there's going to be no real way for STC to move in here efficiently with Alive in such a very, yeah. a vastly superior position at that high ground. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the point of this right now was just to delay that third as long as possible while getting his third up. So the SEC, you know, he realizes, okay, I can't engage this, but I'm going to try to get my economy a little bit better. I'm yeah. um, in a better shape than my opponent. But that being said, it looks like both these players are going to land their command centers at about the same time. Not a big issue at all. But the story here is the positioning that the SEC has, um, trying to solidify something on his opponent's side of the map, to start taking the momentum away from the Alive and put it back in his favor. I was going to say, I was wondering why we're not seeing any Vikings coming out here. Oh. And actually, Stim coming forward from the Marines. It looks like the Sea Chanks are going to be a little bit later for Alive. Sea Chanks a little oh, later, but so he's such Marines. a higher Marine count now. So many Marines. Barreling through the rest of the Sea Chanks uh, of the STC again, pushing forward now. More Sea Chanks coming in, again, sieging up. And now only Sea Chanks wow. remain with a handful of Marines. And now the tide has turned. Just barely, but the CT count is still very high for Alive. And it actually looks like SDC oh, is so going to do a drop on the Siege Tanks, doing their own self-inflicting damage on their Siege Tank, uh, their co-Siege Tank pilots. Yep, two of those Siege Tanks will die. Um, and that was an interesting engagement. Uh, I, th I, don't, I think the SC was caught completely off guard by the amount of Marines he could that. Um, and, and he did lead the engagement. Yeah. He sent all of his Marines, Alive's tanks, all sieged up. And all of a sudden, the SEC lost like a large majority of Marines in that in, in the beginning part of that fight, which is no good, especially when your opponent is reinforcing with Marines of his own that he be, that he had been keeping hidden in his main base. Now I say hidden, uh, but he wasn't necessarily doing that on purpose. He yeah. had those Marines there to try to deflect drops. However, Alive is such a good player, perhaps that that, that he had that in mind uh, when doing that play. Yeah, and with with this air superiority now, with these two Vikings just out. Oh, Alive is still producing medevacs, he's not quite committing to a, a very heavy viking force, but he does have the slight advantage, meaning he doesn't have to waste as many scans as STC would maybe have to uh, in the case to get to see. And these scans are actually used, if you're unaware, nope. uh, because Siege takes fire farther than they can actually see, and a couple vikings oh, will get picked wow. off there. It's that is blunder. very, very big now, that evens up the playing field. Uh, immensely, and the siege tank pushes are getting are probably going to get much much harder uh, for alive now. Now that he's lost those two Vikings, see if those Vikings were out, that medevac would not be around here. Nope. But as it stands, SDC and alive both have the same vision. Actually, a counter drop here now coming from alive. He's moving to the third base. SCVs are evacuating. We'll get a couple SCV kills, kills off a turret as well, allowing Banshee maybe to come back in here for another uh, swing in there. Marines do get cleaned up eventually, though. Good multitasking by both players at this time. Yeah, and I think like right now they're both they're both jockeying for position. Um, obviously, you know, uh, SCC has this high ground advantage 
you know, he you could say he has the advantage here. But again, you said it before, it's a great example. These Minimax in the air. If he still had, if Alive still had those two Vikings, this wouldn't be an issue at all. Alive could start poking forward, gradually moving his tanks forward, getting into a better position. But since those Medivax died, I th actually since those Vikings died, I think they're going after this uh, this Medivax with one HP. Um, you know, he doesn't have that. But that being said, the STC just going to back away for now. A oh, really weird move, but this is GBT, all about gradual troop movements, uh, making sure you don't overextend it anywhere, being very careful. One mistake in TBT, and you're going to feel it for a while. Yeah, another Siege Tank volley comes off, but nothing being done. And this is this is the Siege Tank Wars that I think TBT is mostly infamous known, infamous, infamously known for, where Siege Tanks go up against Siege Tanks, and then oh. they just sit there. And they sit there, oh and they sit there, because you do not want to engage when siege tanks are sieged in a big ball, oh or else that splash God. damage is going to tear you a new one, and it actually looks like a live STC's army is split up. Uh, he has half his army oh. going to the third, half his army is over here. Guess who's right in the middle? The entire army of alive. So many tanks, so many rings, stimming every single one of them aboard, wants to kill this army from the STC. STC realizes he's going to lose all this. He knows it. He's just trying to be as cost efficient as possible, trying to kill as many Marines as he can, trying to get a decent trade, but unfortunately for him, loses absolutely all those Medivacs. Wanted to try to keep those Medivacs alive, try to pick up some Marines, uh, but trying to use, going to try to use his steward's advantage, trying to catch a live off guard, staying with these Marines, backing up so the Marines don't take too much damage, um, and the STC or alive is going to be just fine. Has those Vikings in the air. Has that advantage of seeing further um, without having to use scans, and the SCC is going to back away. Alive in a great situation here, I think, um, but but it's still a, a decently close cage. You can see the supply 151 to 146. Um, Alive has been playing this pretty darn well, but kudos to the SCC for you know he's ahead in supply right now. He's playing this pretty darn well. Yeah, SCC is really being a slugger right now. If I, if I have to put a title on him, where he he fought back, he's evened up the siege tank count now. Even though he was down, he was able to pick off a couple there. And that counterattack really, really helped him taking out that third base and helping him get ahead in Econ now. And we can see it's still very even supplies. What I'm wondering is actually what are the upgrades right now? Yeah, the, the, the STC really has the Marine upgrade advantage. He is 3-3, three, three, okay. Alive is 2-2. Two, two. Throwing away some Marines here, the STC don't want to do that. Um, Oh, and that's a not a man of mule. That's just a mule to repair these tanks. Very cool play from. No, that that's a, that was a mule drop actually. That was a per, that was. That oh, was that, oh, mule he was yeah. trying to get the splash damage yeah. to, to kill. Okay, cool. Very cool. That was a very cool uh, utilization of that mule from the SDC. And now the SDC looks like he wants to push forward. Three three is about to finish for alive. Realizes he's behind in that upgrade advantage. Let's look at the tank weapons really quick. O two for the STC and for Alive it is 01. So the STC favoring upgrading those tanks faster than the bio, Alive the exact opposite at this point in the game. Yeah, and right now both players are going to be playing oh, I was going to say a little bit passive, but that is not very that is not the case. Alive is sitting back just a little bit more. He is taking the structural rocks out in the middle there. He looks like he may spot the army movements though on the right hand side of STC. Got to be very oh. careful here. If STC moves any bit, any bit further, he's going to be committing to this attack. Absolutely fully. Siege tanks are siege. They're going to get volleys up on the Marines. Marine count is dying rapidly here for both players, but it looks like Golly. barely the STC will be able to push through here, oh. but reinforcements from alive are going to clear up the rest of the siege tanks. For the SDC, SDC is going to actually, ooh, a little bit of a missed micro there, missing one of those siege tanks. Marines trying to come in here now and kill the SCVs, trying to get as much economic damage as he can because, of course, he's not going to be able to take out the rest of the army of Alive at this moment. Yeah, very interesting engagement there. Looks like the SDC has that supply lead, 136 to 108. Worker count shows 58 to 53. Workers killed count completely even wow. in that regard. So very evenly matched players here. This is so exciting, Silence. Uh, definitely one of the one of the one of the better TVGs I've seen in a while, and it, it seemed like Alive had their early game advantage, but now the STC pulling ahead in supply, 145 uh, to 120. Was that supply count? It's going to fluctuate here and there, so I'm going to stop attempting to, to name those counts, as it's just going to get me into trouble. But uh, the STC going to motion forward towards the right side of the map, but honestly. At what point do you stop? Like it feels like he's almost throwing units away here, just gonna pick up those medevacs to lose. Oh, lose two medevacs are free, and look at the supply. 130 to 130. So, what happened there was uh, the SDC. Like, is he he's like throwing away units, like for no reason? And alive, all of a sudden, has a supply lead because of that. It's a very tepid moment, actually, for the SDC. It, it, it's that fine balance of can. It, 
it, or the, the, the decision making actually by STC where he's like, do I choose to go in after the third? Can I get enough damage here to make it worth it by losing these Marines? And like you said, with that missed decision, and Alive is in position, actually oh. here comes the, comes to the forefront here. Marines are moving forward, attacking, and it looks like the Siege Tanks are going to be under the ball. He's now the Siege Tanks of SCC are uh, undefended. More Marines oh, wow. coming in, but it looks like the Marine medevac count is very, very high for Alive. Yeah. 117 to 111 now, still very even. But it looks like the Siege Tank count is going to be the advantage for Alive, and he's going to press that. Yeah, this game is so back and forth alive. Once again, taking the supply lead for his own. The STC overextending perhaps just a little bit. Two bike is there, going to help out a lot for a line, but those are going to die incredibly fast. Do those Marines not microing those too optimally there, but taking position as his watchtower. That's a huge position to have. Of course, the watchtower gets you all of that vision. Don't even have to worry about having uh, air units if you can hold that watchtower. Uh, and late siege on this on this Bay Bay Fortress. And the SEC losing a lot of SEVs in that middle line there, forced to repair. Looks like he's just going to give it up. And that is a, that is great news for Alive. Going to be ahead 131 to 102 supply of four bases to his opponent's three. Yeah, th this is a very vastly superior position here for Alive as he has the middle of the map. He kind of dictates the way that everything flows uh, in this match. And he's going to move towards the third base. An immediate lift off here uh, from the SDC. It looks like he will, in fact, get that orbital command center now crippling yep. the economy that was of the SDC. He's not, yeah, he's not mining anymore now, guys. And it looks like this is the last gas now for the SDC. Remember, he is down 1-0. He dropped that first game. He was forfeited. SCV's being pulled off the line now to defend against this Marine attack. And it looks like that will not get held off. Well, actually, with the Siege Tank uh, reinforcement, it looks like it will. And right now, it's going to be defending that only one and only mining base here for the STC. That's what it comes down to. Again, that Marine drop is continuing on here, doing whatever damage it can. And the army of the STC is just going to oh. counterattack. This could be a base trade-ish situation, but uh, Alive is up 135 to 80 supply, and most of the STC's army is on is on Alive's side of the map. So does he back up, or does he just continue surging forward? But it's not even going to matter. STC getting the third on the GG, and Alive takes the series 2-0. 2-0, yeah, and that's unfortunate. Where the STC might have had a chance to come back in in that entire series and put him at three and one if he chose to one to choose choose to win of course you're not going to choose to win if if he won the next two games but unfortunately he forfeits that first game and that puts him now at 2 and 2 in this group play in such a tight group right now with yeah. a lot of, with three of people who are at 2 and 1 now SCC was huge. on to 2 and 2 you're looking at maybe a one or two round difference now in that losers championship bracket yeah just from that uh, series yeah things are definitely getting interesting in pool D of MLG Winter Championships in Columbia.